Number one asks us to determine the length of segment DF. So I'm just going to highlight that on here. So here's um, DF on this larger triangle. And you'll notice that angle D is the 68 degree angle. Angle F is the 44 degree angle. So I'm going to highlight the side that connects the same two angles in the smaller triangle, so the corresponding side, which is AB. And then um, in order to determine how big that is, we also need to come up with a scale factor. So I'll take a look here at the other side that has a number on it in our larger triangle, 18. And that connects the 68 degree angle to the one that doesn't have an angle measure given. And so that one is corresponding with AC. So this will help us get our scale factor. So our scale factor in this case is to either multiply by three, if we're going from small to large, um, or if we're going from the bigger one to the smaller one, it would be multiplying by one third or dividing by three. So that will help us um, to determine the length of this segment DF. So AB is eight and DF is in the larger triangle. So we're gonna multiply by the scale factor of three and that will give us 24 for the length of DF. Number two says we have a triangle ABC, angle A is 35 degrees um, and then angle B is 20 degrees select all triangles which would be similar to triangle ABC. So for triangles, we know that if they share two angles that are the same degree, then the triangles are similar. So let's um, figure out what angle C would be by taking 180, the total of the three angles, and subtracting off 35, whoops, and subtracting off 20, and that will give us our third angle here of 125 degrees. So angle C is 125 degrees. So as long as our triangle shares two angles, um, it will be similar to the original. So this one says in A, it says it has an angle that's 35 degrees, which we have also, and an angle that's 20 degrees, which we have also. So this one is going to be similar. B says that we have a 35 degree angle, same as our original, and we have a 30 degree angle, which we do not have in our original. So this one is not going to be similar. C has a 35 and a 125, which we have for A and C. So this one's gonna be similar. D has a 20 degree angle and a 125 degree angle, which we have for B and C. So this one's good. And then E has a 20 degree angle and a 30 degree angle, and we do not have a 30 degree angle, so this one is not going to be similar. Number three, decide whether the triangles are similar, explain or show your reasoning. Um, so in each triangle, we've got two angles given, so we can determine the third angle. So in this one, we know that a triangle's angles total 180, so we're gonna subtract 123 and 36 from 180, and that will give us 21 degrees for this leftover angle E here. And then that will show us that um, angle E is the same as angle B, so we know that angle E is equal to angle B. And then we also see that, um, Angle D, which is 36, is equal to angle A. So then we would know that these two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. All right, in number four, it says that Andre... Uh, Lynn is trying to convince Andre that all circles are similar, help her write a valid justification as to why that's true. So let me just draw out two circles here. Um, so we can do this one. Let's 
And then um, let me get one more. All right, so we know that in order to prove that something is similar, there has to be a set of rigid motions and dilations that will take one to the next. So if we say that we're going to translate, we could translate um, one circle's center or translate one circle to the next by directed line segment connecting their centers. So then that would bring... Um, our one circle onto the next by the line segment that connects their centers. So now we've got their centers lined up. Then um, we can do a dilation. So then dilate um, one circle using its center or by its center, but using its center as the center of dilation and um, a scale factor of, and I'm gonna do um, the new radius. So I'm gonna do R prime divided by R. So R prime being the second or the new circle, new circles radius divided by the original circles radius, because then that is going to expand our circle, okay, by the center so that it lands on top of the other one. And that would work for any circle since the radius is the only length that defines how big a circle is. Number five, do these parallelograms have to be true? And the answer, so the side lengths are in proportion um, because we've kind of got two divided by three and six divided by nine simplifies to two thirds, but there's nothing with the angles marked. So no because we do not know how, uh, we do not know the measures of the angles. And remember, not only do the side lengths need to be in proportion, but the angle measurements must be equal. Number six, determine if each statement is true, could possibly be true, or definitely can't be true, and explain your reasoning. So an equilateral triangle and a right triangle are similar. This could never be true because an equilateral triangle has to have um, all 60 degree angles. So it could um, never have a right angle or a 90 degree angle. And then a right triangle B and isosceles triangle, or sorry, a right triangle and an isosceles triangle be similar. This could sometimes happen. Okay, so could possibly be true. I'm just going to draw a picture to help explain for this one. Um, so you could have two isosceles triangles, so like this and this, and then you could have a right isosceles triangle. So these are certainly not similar because this one doesn't have a right angle. So this is the case where it could not be true. Um, but you could certainly have two isosceles right triangles that are similar to each other. So you could have this. And then these are going to be similar to each other. So could be true, doesn't have to be true. Number seven, quadrilaterals P and Q are similar. What is the scale factor that takes P to Q? So if we take a look here, um, this side and this side are corresponding sides. And if we're taking P to Q, then we want to start with the new divided by the original. So the scale factor here would be five-fourths. Number eight, the center of circle Q, um, or the circle centered at Q is a scale copy of this one circled at R. So let's find the scale factor. So Q is the scaled. So here's your original length. Here's your new length. So when we're doing the scale factor, we would do new divided by original. So our scale factor in this case is four. Then it wants us to find the length of X, 
Now, X doesn't have a corresponding measurement down in this triangle, so we won't be able to just multiply or divide by the scale factor. Um, but what we do have is we have a right triangle, so we'll be able to use Pythagorean theorem in this top triangle. So five is our hypotenuse. So if you've forgotten, Pythagorean theorem is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C is always the hypotenuse, so in this case, 5. So we do 5 squared equals 3 squared plus x squared. So 25 equals 9 plus x squared. Subtract 9 from both sides, and you'd get 16 equals x squared. So then you can square root, and you get x equals 4.